On today's episode, we have one spoiler for The Last of Us Part 2. It's that one really big one that everyone talks about. So if you know that one spoiler about the thing Abby did, or you just don't care, then go on right ahead and watch. Especially the percentage of you who do know what happened and process to that knowledge in a really shitty way. Enjoy. Dear Frank Welker, fuck you for murdering Optimus Prime. You should never have attacked Autobot City in the first place. And if I see you, I'll make you sit in bolognese with no pants on. That makes me sound rational. Now we do Josh Brolin. Okay. <sighs> okay. It seems we're going to have to have a little talk about the difference between real life and fucking made up video game stuff, aren't we? Wherever you are right now, the chair you're sitting on or the clothes you're wearing, they're not a video game, okay? Look at your own hands or your own face. Hell, touch it if you're so inclined. Touch your stupid face. That's not fictional video game fantasy because you can touch it and it exists and it's like there and stuff. Now, I want you to look at the video game footage that's playing on screen right now. It's The Last of Us Part 2. And that's something we in the business call fucking make-believe. It can be difficult to tell the difference, considering we're in the middle of a very real pandemic and The Last of Us Part 2 is all about a zombie outbreak. But one good way to tell the difference between our outbreak and the zombie outbreak in The Last of Us Part 2 is the presence of zombies. Specifically, zombies whose heads turn into mushrooms. Zombies are actually not real. We put those in the not real category. So, if you're ever in any doubt as to whether or not you're in real life or a fucking video game, just have a little look around and see if there are any fucking zombies with mushrooms for heads. Also, Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the street sharks aren't real either. Now look, there are all manner of specific issues that can affect one's perception of reality, but we're not addressing anybody with those concerns. There are hallucinogenic drugs that can also change how one separates the existent from the imaginary. I'm familiar with both of these things, and I'm not here to talk about either today. No, today we're specifically talking about people who face a day-to-day -day challenge, who struggle with fact-based reasoning, but it's not because something's imbalanced medically or chemically, it's because they're fucking clown-ass <laughs> idiots. Hey. The kind of idiots who, oh, I don't know, send death threats and other forms of harassment to a voice actor because of something her character did in a fake video game, that the moron sending the abuse have to know full well is fake, Oh, did I not mention that happened? Because that fucking well happened. Of course it happened. I said the word her, didn't I? Of course harassment happened, for fuck's sake. So, Laura Bailey is a voice actor who plays the role of Abby in The Last of Us Part 2, a fun game about mushroom zombies. Abby is a character that has upset certain perpetually miserable little scrotums in the gaming community because of course she has. I said she, didn't I? Of course people hate her for fuck's sake. Anyway, these are the people who are crying rivulets into their own soggy underpants because Abby has muscles. She's got their Melissa de Twilla guns and people are whining about realism because apparently it's unrealistic to attain Melissa de Twilla guns except for the people who attain such guns such as, I don't know, Melissa Detwiller, or lots of other women, including the person Abby's body is actually modelled after. There are lots of critical discussions that can be had about Naughty Dog's latest critical darling, but it's a well at maximum contaminant level. Between the developers themselves getting into it on social media, and the people demanding 10 out of 10 on critical praise, and the people who hate the game because it's got gay and trans characters in it, and the exhausted fuckers who just want it all to end, there's not much room for healthy discussion left. This is something some people will and already 
blame me for because I said The Last of Us Part 2 was poorly paced and that Naughty Dog's abusive crunch practices shouldn't be forgotten. And for committing this treason, I am of course prostrated before thee in lugubrious apology. People dislike Abby. They don't like her muscles. Or they don't like her character arc or they don't like her personality, or whatever. There are valid and there are infantile reasons to criticize her role in the game. There's also the really bad thing Abby did, that for some reason people are viewing as one of the unforgivable curses from transphobic turf rat JK Rowling's fucking wizard books, which by the way, aren't real either. Abby killed Joel, you know Joel. The selfish, violent, enemy-making protagonist in The Last of Us Episode 1, the phantom dickhead called Joel who is a dickhead, the guy whose entire character arc up to and including the ambiguous final line of the game suggests that his self-centered brutality and disregard for human life that gets in his way would catch up with him one day? You know, that fella who wasn't a hero, was barely trying to be a good man, and whose entire story arc could only fittingly end with violent death. Yeah, it's a grim job killing a protagonist who wasn't at all lovable except now he apparently is, but someone had to do it. <laughs> it's a thing, this job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Be an artist, you inch by inch. The <laughs> that person, by the way, wasn't a real person. It was a fictional character in a video game called Abby. It was not a voice actor in real life called Laura Bailey, who recently shared a sampling of the attack she's received for something she literally, okay, literally didn't do. I'm going to kill you underscore in the love us part two. I'm going to find where you live and slaughter you for what you did to underscore. Mark my fucking words. I will stab you. Just wanna say, you should die bitch. Fuck you you ruined it. I hope your parents die by a hard cancer for killing my underscore. I will find you. And I will kill your kid for that just wait for that. Hmm. Borders somewhere along the line between scary and tragic. These messages were clearly sent by utter rifles who have maybe played violent video games like The Last of Us Part 2 a bit too much. They should probably delete the game from their hard drives. Then after that, they can burn their PS4s, fuck off of the internet for a day, and eat as much tree bark as they can just to feel like they're experiencing something for once in their lives, the lives that they apparently have so many of. Let's give these people the benefit of the doubt for now and assume that they're all fucking dickheads who can't tell the difference between what a character does and what an actor does. Yeah, there's a worse alternative, but we'll get to that. This is unfortunately, weirdly, all too common. Growing up in a country obsessed with primetime soap operas like Coronation Street and EastEnders, it was not uncommon to see interviews with actors, predominantly the ones who portrayed villains or were currently cheating on their fictional spouses, talking about how they're stopped in the street and scolded very earnestly, or worse, for the actions of their on-screen counterparts. One such actor whose character arc I remember vividly is Alex Ferns, who portrayed the terrorizing domestic abuser Trevor Morgan. So effective was his cold-eyed performance that he was known as Britain's most hated soap opera villain in the early 2000s, and he was hated. Not always within the made-up region of Walford, a made-up place that the soap opera is set in, that is made up. At one stage I remember the BBC security came to me in Elstree and said, look, we can't have you going out the front gate anymore because there's a guy who wants to kill you. He once said of his experiences with EastEnders fans who took their investment a little too fucking far. One EastEnders actor, Robert Kaczynski, has actually been punched in the fucking head before over his role as the antagonistic Sean Slater. Punched in the head. He had stones thrown at him in the streets. He was made afraid to fucking go out because he was an actor who played a bad person, not because he was bad. England's pretty fucked up like that. Sometimes they'll randomly attack you over there even if you're not famous. Not that I speak from experience except for all the experience. Stories are available in their multitudes. Like Emma Rosam of Shameless fame who has faced abuse in the streets from people who think she, and not her character Fiona Gallagher, overdosed her fucking baby. Her fictional baby that isn't real and didn't really overdose on the drugs that also weren't real because none of it was real. Such treatment has happened to a number of gay 
Game of Thrones actors such as Alina Hedy and Jack Gleason for portraying murderers and schemers, not actually murdering or scheming. One can safely assume that the abuse received by Laura Bailey comes from other sad sacks who have very little going on in their lives, except for their commercial video game products, and so it stands to twisted reason that they'd mourn the loss of a fictional video game character as if it were a real person. But nonetheless, as we've just learned with EastEnders fans, some of these people have real issues and are capable of causing very serious harm if given the opportunity. The vast majority of them are pathetic wankers. Some of them might be legit dangerous, and they should be expelled from the community. Get right in the social oubliette and shut their fucking mouths. But by Christ, some hardcore nerds out there are real fucking cretins. I still remember having to explain to people what an actor is when it was announced that Robert Pattinson was going to play Batman. Oh me, oh my, how alleged comic book fans fucking sulked. Not the guy from Twilight, no, no, not Edward Cullen, no, say it ain't so. Except Robert Pattinson is an actor, quite a fucking good one actually. He's not Edward Cullen any more than Arnold Schwarzenegger is Mr. Freeze. We've done this with Heath Ledger and the Joker people. You see, it was Robert Pattinson who was cast in the role of beloved comic book character Val the Batman Kilmer, not Edward Cullen, who, if I haven't established this firmly enough, is a fictional person who isn't actually able to accept DC Universe roles because he's not actually there. He's a fucking vampire, you blowjob. Those pale toothy shits aren't real either. Well, except Bobby Kotick. Laura Bailey didn't even write the script, you malingering scrotal polyp. Like, she didn't even develop The Last of Us Part 2. She didn't direct it. None of it was her idea. She didn't decide to kill Joel fucking whatever his surname is, doesn't matter, he's fucking dead and he deserved it. Dot com. She was cast in a role and she played it, like a professional actor does. Only a spunk brain buffoon snorting super glue under a hot stage lamp could be so breathtakingly incompetent as to blame a performer for the performed act itself. What, are you gonna read the Bible and think that will happen next? Of course, my string of personally amusing insults applies only to people who actually believe somehow that Laura Bailey killed Joel, the dead man who died. The other explanation for behaviour this fucked up and alarming directed towards a woman is that we've got some gamers on our hands who are angry at women for existing again now, don't we? Do we? Be honest now. I mean, there is prior for that. And I'm not interested in listening to the people who are about to make an argument in favour of this abuse, just for the sake of argument. The devil has enough advocates, mate. I'm talking to the piss boilers. If you're someone who sent threats to Bailey, I'll make it your choice. Your choice! Either you're a complete imbecile who thinks Laura Bailey reached into The Last of Us Part 2 with the power glove from Freddy's Dead and killed Joel in real life, or you just hate women and were waiting for an excuse to vent your outrage at having to play a woman who you didn't want to wank over. Oh, but it's not just women! Neil Druckmann, the director, got abuse too! Yeah, most of that abuse was sexist and racist and homophobic, so it doesn't really back anyone up. Not that sending threats to anyone is a good thing to do, so it doesn't actually justify anything. The point is, much of the abuse come from people who seem to have some seriously deep-rooted issues with women. And Jesus Christ to the transphobia! Fucking hell! Like I said, I leave that choice entirely up to you. And some of you are trying to concoct a third option for your pitiable behaviour as I speak, but you'll still be a massive fucking weapon at the end of the day, so you can fuck off right now. Actually, hold on before you do. I'm not done diminishing you yet. Fucking harassers make my job ten times fucking harder. You know I get morons sending me abuse blaming me for this shit whenever it happens. Hell, I'm pretty sure some of the abusers out there actually message me to blame me for it in a twisted form of look what you made me do. In any case, as someone who criticises very genuine abuses of power and predatory behaviour in the game industry, it absolutely fucking stinks to see a contingent of the gamers take things entirely too far and start going after people who don't fucking deserve a thing. And I can tell you 
how it's the people that don't deserve it, because it's very fucking obviously the wrong people. Like, when a map designer on Wolfenstein Youngblood was personally attacked on social media for the game's microtransactions. Now, nobody lays into microtransactions more than me, but do you see me going after a map designer? No, because it's a fucking map designer. And do you know what map designers do? Design maps! Do you know what they don't do? Make executive decisions concerning the monetization of a corporation's product. Usually executive decisions are made by executives. The clue's kind of in the name. I know, I know, many CEOs and other high paid industry leaders are hard to contact. Their money and relatively unpublicized positions keep them protected from scrutiny, while other bigwigs have very clearly managed social media profiles that broadcast an impersonal, unattackable public face. It can be frustrating to have so much anger in you and nowhere to put it, it can make you feel small. But going after someone on the ground floor, someone who just tried to make a game, doesn't make you a big person. Harassment and death threats only make it harder to talk about things in the game industry that need talking about. It's impossible to bring up truly outrageous abuses of power without being lumped into the outrage set. I have to waste so much of my time admonishing and disavowing harassment, which I should absolutely do, but on the other hand, I absolutely shouldn't have to do it because it absolutely shouldn't have happened in the first place. It destroys the discussion and tarnishes any opportunity to have a serious talk about the game industry's many, many problems. And yes, a lot of it comes from people who hate women, who hate gay people, who hate trans people, who hate marginalized people. And fuck it all if that's not playing right into the hands of publishers who, it needs to be said as usual, have never, ever, ever seriously attempted to curb the abuse that happens in their own communities. Like I said, it falls on me to constantly warn potential viewers, most of whom are actually smart enough not to be stupid, to not harass people. But how often do you see major triple A publishers tell their fans not to threaten reviewers who give their stupid fucking games an 8 out of 10 or <gasps> lower. When do you see them condemning harassment campaigns against marginalized members of the industry? They don't go to bat for their own fucking developers, not to mention anyone else. Naughty Dog has come out to condemn the harassment, but that's Naughty Dog having to go to bat for itself. The actual bigwigs in this industry keep their mouths firmly fucking shut. And if any of this abuse spills over into a game developer or a voice actor or just someone in the game industry getting seriously fucking hurt by some piss baby so-called gamer who actually gets violent. I'll see which publishers make a performative display of condemnation while remembering who among them said nothing before. And why? Well, as we've been learning lately, there are some reasons we can extrapolate. The AAA video game industry is so steeped in abuse and exploitation itself that this kind of behavior is stock and trade. On top of that, it's an industry notoriously terrified of making declarative statements, acknowledging the political themes in games, and saying anything that might risk offending status quo warriors and angry little teenage white boys with unwiped asses, and an irrational hatred of a world that, let's face it, is slowly and surely moving on without them. Especially in an era where companies have learned that there's plenty of money to be made in cheaply pandering to queers like me. The angry, threatening, threatened little lads are outmoded and obsolete and they know it and they're afraid, but more afraid still is the game industry clinging onto the terror of their retribution. Or they actually approve of it, maybe not explicitly, but their silence is condonement enough. It only helps them to stifle and suffocate serious discussion and focus only on the glowing 10 out of 10 reviews. The reviews their own fan bases will go to war over. The game industry likes hype, not critique. It likes press release regurgitation, not journalism. It likes compliance and silence, not outspoken developers and people who will shine a light on their practices. And all this harassment only contributes to what game publishers ultimately want, to retain control of the message on their terms like they've always done. A culture of fear is how the video game industry has always maintained control. A culture of fear being the only way to describe a community that resorts to death threats so often. And every single one of you harassing, attacking, nasty little shit. You are corporate tools. You always have been. You always will be. Now, now you can fuck off. Most of my viewers are lovely, but if you're someone who thinks harassment and death threats are a good way to make your voice heard, you can piss off back to the subreddit you crawled out of. There's a whole gaggle of dickheads on YouTube who'll tell you you're right for doing it. I'm not one of them. No, I'm the dickhead that has to explain to some people that an actor is not a character.
No, not even if they're a character actor. Dickhead. I should reiterate that if you watch that video... That video? Hang on. Shut up. <laughs> Are you done having a giggle? Probably not. You see, this is proof that gamers are oppressed. Thank God for me. That'll do. I mean, I made most of my point anyway. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Harvesting the kidneys for the fall. Saving up the livers in the fridge. No one ever thanks me when I'm done. How self-absorbed people can be. With a slice!